42 things you are doing wrong in Rocket League. Look, because this video is pretty self-explanatory and I just moved and also I just got out of the hospital. I'm just going to tell you the truth about ranking up in Rocket League. The truth is you're probably not hard stuck because you don't know how to flip reset or because you don't know how to musty flick or because you don't know any of that flashy stuff you see in the clips. The real reason you're hard stuck is because you repeat the same bad decisions over and over. And the worst part, it's not your fault because most likely you don't notice your mistakes. You don't notice your mistakes because number one, fundamentally, if you did, you'd be a higher rank. Number two, the average ranked opponent you get doesn't punish you or teach you these lessons or else they'd be a higher rank. And because number three, overall, Rocket League is just hard. Luckily, you found somebody who's sunk almost 4,000 hours of their life into carball so today we're gonna be going over 42 mechanics settings decision making mistakes and everything in between that you're probably doing wrong before you get started i know the number one question you probably have is why should i listen to this guy and the truth is yeah it's totally your choice i'm just a guy on the internet who wants to help people get better at carball but if you're new here i am the founder of rocket league's largest coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside, we have a team of six full-time SSL and even RLCS coaches, as well as 20 plus other people around the company who all work together to help plat through champ rank players like you watching rank up in less than six weeks. At the time I'm recording this, my team and I can take 72 more players before we're booked out. So if you want to join our network of now over 2,740 players who've joined to date, DM me on Discord with a keyword now to talk details about coaching. Click the first link down below to join the Discord and message someone on my team below. Otherwise, here are the mistakes. All right, jumping into the mistakes. Mistake number one, pushing up into your corner on defense. This mistake stems from the fact that I think just too many low-ranked players think their side of the field is bad and the opponent's side of the field is good. It's actually more like corners, safe, net, dangerous, everything in between kind of middle. When you understand this, you understand that the worst thing you can possibly do is drive up to your front post into your corner when playing defense. This is because pushing up into your corner makes it hard to read the ball, easy to play the ball behind you, and easy to use your backboard against you. Instead, if the opponent is pushing into your corner instead of at your net intentionally, you can just let them go there. By letting them push into your corner and just waiting back, you'll have a much easier time when the ball does come center to actually attack it and clear it with power. Number two, using bad camera settings or controller settings. If you have camera shake on or you're playing with the default controller settings or the default video settings, or even the default sensitivity settings, you're at a disadvantage. I actually released a guide that was originally only for players in my coaching program up on the YouTube a couple months back. And so if you haven't watched a camera settings or controller settings guide in 2023, seriously, if you haven't set your controller settings, click that video before coming back. Mistake number three, using any car other than the Octane or Fennec in ranked. The Octane and the Fennec are probably the number two two and number one best cars for ranked in that order. Look, if you just want to have fun with the Dominus or Breakout or you're a Merc main, be my guest. <laughs> but just know that if you're going to ranked with any other car other than the Octane or Fennec, from my experience, you're at a disadvantage. Full explanation will be in my newest Fennec versus Octane video up here. Or if you can't be bothered to watch that, just pick Octane or Fennec. Mistake number four, not using power slide when you land. So many people on stream ask me how to improve their recoveries or how it is that the pros play fast. And if I could only give you one tip to make you play faster in Rocket League, my number one secret, if you will, is just holding power slide every time you land. You see, if you're transitioning from air to ground and your car is even just slightly tilted to one side or the other, you're gonna lose a little bit of speed due to 
friction when you land. Instead, if you hold power slide and you just make it a habit anytime you're landing to keep the button pressed down, you're gonna preserve more of that speed that you would otherwise lose. And this is the secret to how you make your recoveries smooth in almost any situation. Remember, always hold power slide when you're landing, whether you're bumped, jumping onto the wall, off the wall, this is gonna make you play three times as fast. Mistake number five, being AFK for the first 20 seconds of the match. I don't wanna have to say this in a YouTube video, but fellas, what, what, what are we doing AFK for the first 20 seconds of the ranked game? If you can only have one tip in this list, have the controller in your hand when the ranked match starts. That's my number one. Just stop going AFK the first 20 seconds of our match, please. Thank you. Number six, going for corner boost while your teammate goes for the kickoff in 2v2. Going boost instead of cheating up for the ball on kickoffs is probably the easiest to fix mistake that I see all the way up to SSL in ranked. The problem with going for corner boost instead of doing this cheating up where you kind of move closer to the kickoff in 2v2 is if there's any 50-50 that doesn't shoot out to one of the sides, whoever is closest to that kickoff is gonna get free possession of the ball. We'll talk more about this later, but the higher ranked you become, the more important it is to have possession of the ball. So from now on, please stop going for corner boost instead of cheating up on kickoffs. Sometimes, sure, the ball will go over your head, but I promise if you will just take my word on this, cheating up will help more than it hurts. Number seven, playing with the wrong sensitivity for your rank. When it comes to what sensitivity is best for you, especially if you're struggling with consistency or speed, here's my rule for sensitivity. Higher sensitivity comes at the benefit of playing faster and quicker, but at the cost of playing more uncontrolled and inconsistent. So if you're lower ranked where, you know, usually the problem is consistency, I recommend you start out with a low sensitivity, somewhere in the 1.2 to 1.4 range for both. However, as you climb ranks, I recommend you steadily increase this maybe 0.1 or 0.2 every rank you climb. That way, as you rank up and you get better control of your car, you can continue to increase your speed step by step. From what I found coaching players, using the right sensitivity sensitivity for your rank is one of the most slept on settings. And if you get this right, you're going to be able to play twice as fast and with half as many missed open nets. Number eight, training without free play shortcuts. For those of you who don't know, Psyonix added a list of free play shortcuts for everybody, including console players, that you can use to train faster in free play. If you don't know the free play shortcuts or the best drills to use in free play, I'll have a video linked here. But if you're somebody who spends any amount of time in free play and you don't know what all of the keyboard shortcuts do, you're missing out. So click that short video there for more info and stop just hitting the ball around in free play like it's 2015. We can do better. Number nine, fast aerials. I'm not going to spend time explaining why your fast aerials are wrong. But what I will say is if you're watching this video and you're below champ one, I would bet that nine out of 10 of you watching are doing your fast aerials wrong. I'm sorry for just referencing other videos this entire video, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. So if this applies to you, I made a video called Stop Doing Fast Aerials Like This. It's like a two minute video. It got like 500k views because so many people realized they were doing their fast aerials wrong. If you're below champ one, click that video. I promise it'll be worth your time. Mistake number 10, using both jumps when you only need one. This is a mistake I see when coaching intermediate or even high ranked players a lot. But for whatever reason, when lower ranked players see the ball in the air, they think they always need to use both of their jumps. The truth is you can actually reach a Above the goalie box with just a single jump and still have your second dodge, still have your flip. So if you're fast aerialing or double jumping for a ball that's just slightly off the ground, you're missing out on being able to use that second flip to course correct or add power or adjust your shot at the last minute. Point is, only use two jumps if you're in like a foot race to the ball or the ball is really high in the air. Otherwise, if you can hit the ball while saving your second flip for extra power and adjustment at the last second, do it. This will save you so many saves and goals in the long run. Number 11, not using workshop maps once you hit diamond or champ. You see, a lot of players look at the pros who mainly just use free play and think free play is the best way to improve. And while nobody has it perfectly figured out, the reason pros use free play is because they already know all the mechanics they 
need to know. They've learned everything. And so free play just helps them warm up. If you're trying to improve, odds are you don't know every mechanic and you're probably not as good as the pros. So when it comes to learning and improving and building up that mechanical foundation, players in my coaching program say they've benefited most from a few workshop maps, more over free play and even training packs. The fan favorite workshop maps seem to be rings, anything rings related by Lathomir, dribble to overhaul or any dribble challenge, as well as aim training by Coco. Now, of course, any training is good training, but once you hit diamond or champ and you really need to build that mechanic, mechanical foundation, whether it's aerial play or more advanced dribbling, workshop maps, if you have access to them, are going to be the best way to go. Number 12, pushing up too far when waiting for a center on offense. I know this might sound super specific, but this mistake plagues players all the way up to SSL, and I still make it to this day. Situation is, when you're waiting for the center on offense as the second man, it can be very tempting to want to slowly creep up towards the net. The problem is the closer you get to the opponent's net, the less room you have to actually drive up and take the shot. The mistake most low rank players make is they'll push so close up to the net that the center will literally just go over their head. <laughs> so whenever you're waiting for a pass as second man, try to remember to stay back a little bit further than you think, and I bet you'll be in a better spot for the pass. Number 13, playing inside the goal box. Since Rocket League is sort of like soccer, new players often think it's good to defend from inside your net. The problem with defending inside your net is, well, number one, your backboard is completely unguarded. But number two, if you go for a save from your goalie box, odds are you're going to clear it in a straight line forward. Because of the way radius of coverage works in Rocket League, and I won't fully explain it here, it's almost always better to defend your net from one post or the other sideways. When you actually make your save, you'll be to clear the ball to the corner as opposed to just recentering it right back to the opponents. So if you ever find yourself in net, if you have time, get to one of the posts and turn your car sideways. Just this one change will make playing defense infinitely easier. Number 14, pushing past back post. If you watch my videos, you probably know back post is better than front post. But what you might not realize is that when I say back post, I mean you should be playing behind the back post. Post. Back post means you're so far back that you actually have access to the backboard as well as the net. The reason it's so important to play this far back is exactly that. So you can go to the backboard if you need to. And that way, no matter where the shot is, it's always going to be in front of you. Next time you rotate back post, make sure you stick back back post. Don't push up. Mistake number 15, using the wrong air roll. If you didn't know, there are actually two air rolls in Rocket League. You have joystick air roll and then directional air roll, which is just air roll left or air roll right. My rule is that for anything ground recovery related, so think, you know, wave dashing off the wall, going for a quick air roll shot or anything like that, I recommend you use joystick air roll. This is because if you bind power slide and air roll to the same button, like I've recommended in my keybind, guide, joystick air roll will be more smooth and quicker on the ground. Then when I'm going for long-term aerials, so think air dribbles or ground air dribbles or fast aerials or really anything where I'm going to be spending a lot of time in the air, that's when I use directional air roll. This has helped me figure out which air roll to use in which situations and my decision making as a result is much quicker. So that's just how I do it. Give it a shot if you'd like. Number 16, ignoring 1v1 play, especially if you're a champ or higher rated watching right now at a certain rank 1v1 play is just unavoidable i remember when i first hit gc1 i reached out to the rlcs coach verge because i was stuck for over six months he said luke your decision making for 2v2 and 3v3 is great but the truth is you're just slow you need to play more 1v1 since then i've realized that once you get to a certain rank in Rocket League, you're going to spend a ton of time in your games in offensive and defensive one-on-ones and just rotating back post every time isn't going to be enough. Make sure you're converting 90% of your 1v1s on offense and you're saving 90% of your 1v1s on defense. And only then should you move on to the more flashy stuff. Number 17, training the wrong mechanics. If you want to rank up faster than 99% of Rocket League players, 
you probably shouldn't be training the same thing as 99% of Rocket League players. Most people below GC are spamming air dribbles, flip resets, and aerial redirects in training. If you want to beat 90% of players, simply practice backward saves, dribbles, power shots, fast aerials, and recoveries. Check out my two minute tutorial series if you wanna learn any of these mechanics fast. Number 18, not having power side and air roll on the same key bind. Power side only happens on the ground and air roll only happens in the air. So if you can, bind them to the same button to simply save space on your controller. Plus, as a bonus, if you do this, you'll be able to more easily chain wave dashes and recoveries on the ground. Number 19, stop dribbling in front of your net. I see too many low rank players put the ball on top of their car in front of their net. The hopefully obvious problem here is if the ball's sitting on top of your car and you're right in front of your net, you're basically inviting the opponent to ego challenge you. Point is, if you're trying to control the ball on defense especially, it's almost always better to bounce dribble the ball off of your end of the field and to do so on the sides. That way you don't invite the opponents to early challenge you, especially right in front of your net. Number 20, speed flipping the wrong way. Now there are three huge mistakes people make when trying to learn speed flips and I cover them more in depth in my full speed flip tutorial. But the number one mistake I see people make when they're trying to learn speed flip is thinking you're supposed to diagonal flip 45 degrees. This is actually wrong. To get the most consistent speed flip results, sorry KBM players, you actually want to speed flip somewhere between 15 and 30 degrees off center of true north. Now this isn't to say you can't speed flip 45 degrees, but the problem with speed flipping more than 45 degrees is if you're even just slightly off on the input on your controller, you're going to accidentally barrel roll and you're not going to be able to flip cancel. So if it helps, you can think about the clock positions to make sure you can speed flip correctly every time. To speed flip left, you want to flip to 11 and then cancel down to 7. And if you're speed flipping to the right, you want to dodge to 1 and then cancel down to 5. Number 21, practicing the right mechanic at the wrong rank. Every mechanic in Rocket League is useful, it just might not be useful at your rank. You've got to understand is that when I tell you to learn a specific mechanic in these videos, I'm catering my advice for the average player. And odds are, if you're watching this, you're probably near average. But if you're not, take my advice with a grain of salt. At the low ranks, I think winning is mostly just about hitting the ball hard consistently. But as you climb into champ and even GC, that's where the mechanics that help you take possession and take control of the ball become more important. I'm not going to go super into it because I explain this more in other videos, but point is sending the ball to bad players will usually just lead to them missing and you getting free nets, but giving possession to good players will keep you stuck on defense all game long. I'm just a guy on the internet. Take my advice and apply it to your games if it helps. Okay, that was mistake 21 and I'm interrupting here because I actually can't continue any longer in this video. If you made it to this point in the video, I think you should know, um, but I actually have a blood clot in my right lung right here. So if I talk too much on recording, I actually get super winded and I lose my breath and I'm just out of it. I haven't said this earlier in the video, but I've actually been tracking my heart rate as I record. And the more I talk, the more my heart rate climbs up and up and up and up. I would love to get to 42 mistake, but this is actually day four of recording for me. I've chunked this recording into four days to allow my body time to recover. And I don't think I can get to 42 mistakes in this video in the next week. So if you made it to this point, Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry for disappointing. Uh, I know we were supposed to get to 42 mistakes. We're going to have to stop at 21. And uh, if you're a real one, subscribe and turn on post notice because I have this video scripted out here on my monitor. I will continue. I'll finish these last 21 mistakes sometime in the future, but I just can't do it now. I'm sorry. I just can't do it right now. So thank you so much for watching. Turn on post notifications for part two, and I hope to see you guys back very, very soon. But otherwise, thank you for watching.